Throughout the histories of Arda, there have been many prominent characters that have touched the annals of history, be that for good or for evil, or in large or small ways. Some characters affected the passage of time so subtly that it might as well as be as though they never existed, whilst others shaped the very face of the world with their will. One such character is Elrond the Half-Elven, who features heavily in the histories of Middle-earth, playing a vital role in the eventual defeat of Sauron himself. Greetings all, I am your guide the Archivist. Today I will look at Elrond the Half-Elven, his origins, his influences on the events of Middle-earth and his final fate. Before we begin, please like the like and subscribe waystones down below, so more people can learn from the archives. Appearance and Character The face of Elrond was ageless, neither old nor young, though in it was written the memory of many things both glad and sorrowful. His hair was dark as shadows of twilight, and upon it was a set of circlets of silver. His eyes were grey as a clear evening, and in them was a light like the light of stars. Venerable he seemed as a king crowned with many winters, and yet hale as he tried warrior in the fullness of his strength. He was the Lord of Rivendell and mighty among both elves and men. Elrond appeared timeless, exuding an air of neither age nor youth. His countenance bore the weight of millennia, reflecting a wisdom akin to that of an ancient king, a sage-like wizard, and a seasoned warrior in his prime. Described as possessing dark hair and eyes akin to shimmering grey starlight, he was often seen adorned with a circlet of silver. Born to Erendil and Elwig, Elrond was a half-elven lineage, with Erendil being the offspring of mortal Tuor and the elf Idril, and Elwing being the descendant of Beren, a man, and Luthien, the daughter of the elf Kim Fingol and the Maya Melian. Consequently, Elrond's heritage traced back to all three elven tribes, Vanyar, Noldor through Idril, and Sindar through Luthien, a Maya, and all three houses of the Adain, Ador, Haleth, and Beor. Powers Elrond proved himself a formidable warrior, leading elven armies with great skill, most notably during the Last Alliance. His leadership and wise counsel were highly effective, and he possessed the gift of foresight, allowing him to perceive distant lands and events from Rivendell. One remarkable display of the power of his ring, Vilja, involved summoning a massive flood on the Brunian to vanquish the Nazgul, pursuing Frodo and Glorfindel. Additionally, Elrond was adept in the art of entering others' minds, known as Asanwe. Even after the One Ring's destruction, he communicated telepathically with Galadriel and Gandalf during their return journey from Minas Tirith. Elrond was renowned as one of the most morally unyielding leaders in Middle-earth. Aragorn speculated that only a select few, including Elrond, Galadriel and Gandalf, could completely resist Saruman's persuasive rhetoric. Furthermore, Elrond firmly opposed Sauron and declined his offer of partnership with the Elves. The First Age Elrond Half-Elf, the son of Erendil and Elwig and great-grandson of Luthien, came into the world at the refuge of the Havens of Syrian in Beleriand during the late First Age, just prior to its conquest by the Sons of Feanor. Elrond and his twin brother Elros were taken captive and raised by Maglor, a son of Feanor. Although there were no immediate bonds between them, Maglor eventually took compassion on them, nurtured them, and grew to care for them. As the First Age and the War of Wrath drew to a close, the Sons of Feanor were once again operating independently, indicating that by this time, Elrond and Elros had lightly departed from their nominal captivity and journeyed to Linden. The Second Age In the concluding days of the First Age, Elrond and Elros faced a significant decision, whether to align themselves with the fate of men or elves. Elros ultimately chose the path of men, and was known as Elros Tar Minotaur, eventually becoming the first king of Numenor. On the other hand, Elrond opted to be recognised among the elves and continued to serve as the captain and herald of Gil-galad, the high king of the Noldor, remaining in Linden. Subsequently, during the commencement of the War of the Elves and Sauron in SA 1695, Elrond was dispatched to a region by Gil-galad to safeguard it from the encroaching forces of Sauron. Despite his efforts, Elrond's forces arrived too late and were not substantial enough to overcome Sauron's army. 
It led the refugees from Aregion, including Celeborn, northwards, narrowly escaping thanks to the intervention of Durin III's forces. It was in SA 1697 that Elrond established Rivendell at the foothills of the Misty Mountains, as a place of refuge and defence. For the subsequent four years, Rivendell endured a siege by Sauron's forces. With the arrival of the Numenorians, the besieging army at Rivendell found itself trapped between the forces of Gil-galad and Elrond, ultimately meeting their demise. Elrond, remaining in Rivendell, convened the inaugural White Council in the presence of Galadriel. It was during this council that it was determined Rivendell would serve as the last bastion to the west of the Misty Mountains, and that the three rings held by Gil-galad and Galadriel should remain concealed. Some accounts suggest that during this time, Gil-galad entrusted Elrond with Vilya, the Blue Ring, whilst in other versions Gil-galad retained both Narya and Vilya until the end of the Second Age. Furthermore, it was at this juncture that Elrond first encountered Celebrion, the daughter of Celeborn and Galadriel. During the later part of the Second Age, Elrond joined forces with Gil-galad in the last alliance of elves and men. Their journey from Rivendell to Mordor in SA 3431 marked a significant chapter in history. Elrond played a crucial role as Gil-galad's herald in the war against Sauron. The alliance comprising of elves from Lothlorien, men from Arnor and Gondor, and likely dwarves led by Durin IV, triumphed over Sauron's army at the Battle of Dagolad. This victory led to a seven-year siege of Barad-dûr. Eventually Sauron met his demise at the hands of Elendil in Gil-galad, allowing Isildur to claim the One Ring after cutting it from Sauron's finger. The conflict took a heavy toll on both elves and men, resulting in the loss of Gil-galad, Elendil, and his younger son Anarion during the siege. Elrond and Círdan stood as remaining commanders of the elves, whilst Isildur became High King of the Realms in Exile. Discovering Isildur's claim to the One Ring, Elrond implored him to destroy it in the fires of Mount Doom. However, the ring's allure led to Isildur refusing Elrond's advice, claiming it instead as a wear guild of his fallen family members. Elrond, possibly unaware of the true nature of the One Ring, acknowledged to Sildor's claim. Following the war, Elrond returned to Rivendell. The Third Age In the year TA-109, Elrond married Celebrian. Their twins Eladan and Elrahir were born in TA-130, and a daughter, Arwen Undumiel, in TA-241. Unfortunately, Celebrian was lost in TA-2510, due to an orc attack while crossing the Misty Mountains. Subsequently, she departed from the Undying Lands. In later years, Elrond was crucial in protecting the heirs of Isildur. He took in and raised Aragorn II as after his father's passing in TA 2933, giving him the name Estel, meaning hope. Elrond was also a member of the White Council, a close friend of Gandalf the Grey, and assisted Thorin II's quest by translating the moon writing on Thorin's map. Upon learning of Aragorn and Arwen's betrothal in TA 2980, Elrond was saddened but reluctantly accepted their choice. He decreed that for Arwen's choice to become mortal, she could only marry the King of Arnor or Gondor. Following Frodo's departure with the One Ring, Elrond sent out riders to guide him back to Rivendell. He also heard the council in October 25th, 3018, where the Fellowship was formed to attempt the destruction of the Ring. It is evident that Elrond played an integral role in the guiding of the members of the Fellowship, including Frodo and Sam. Five months later, Elrond instructed his sons Eladan and Elrahir to accompany the rangers of the north to Rohan, advising Aragorn to take the paths of the dead through them. He remained in Rivendell until the destruction of the One Ring and the fall of Sauron, and then travelled to Minas Tirith to present the Scepter of Anuminus to King Elisar and give his daughter Arwen in marriage. On September 29th, 3021, Elrond departed Middle-earth to sail over the sea with the other ring-bearers, bidding farewell and to return no more. And so I have now covered the content for this video, but if there's anything that has been missed, please share them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this content, please remember to like the like and subscribe waypoints down below. Na luego van advan, until we meet again.